12 points of reform of the Christian Church proposed by Bishop John Shelby Jack Spong in his book A New Christianity for a New World, as reviewed by La Ratita. I was first aware of Spong and his thesis from the Deconversion series by Evidence. Spong is a retired bishop from the Episcopal Church and a liberal theologian. I have found his theology much in the line of what I thought the last years of my own deconversion, and I wondered if I would have accepted his thesis. However, I came to Spong's thesis when I had already apostatized Christianity. I was raised in the Catholic Church in a Catholic majority country that back then was under a concordat, and I assisted to a confessional school. Since school, I remember I was non-dogmatic, while I accepted most of the story of the Holy Scripture, except for the obvious legends such as the flood and the creation myths, I still cast some doubt of what the brothers and the priests and the Bible said. After the school I was more aware of the many religions out there, and I recognized myself as a weak agnostic. I was still in the church, aware of the all different theologies that coexisted within Catholicism despite the official dogma, so I felt no compulsion to apostatize. But theism somehow didn't make much sense as it did in back in high school. After several years, I had become a stronger agnostic and definitely an untheistic one, in the sense that I felt no personal God directly caring every single action of human lives. I still appreciated the Christian values, particularly Christian humanism, and the fact that I was aware of the many Catholic clergy who debated dogma let me feel still home in Catholicism. Until I realized that the Christian values that I praised came with a strong baggage and my supposed Christian humanism was really more of a secular humanism. I didn't need Christianity to tell me how I should live and be a moral person. And free from the pretension of being within a church, I embraced my non-theism as an active atheism. I wonder, however, if I was aware of his punk and his thesis in those last years before apostasy, if I would rather embrace them. Anyhow, here they are. First, theism as a way of defining God is dead. So most theological God talk is today meaningless. A new way to speak of God must be found. By theism, Spong refers here to the concept of a supreme transcendent agent and creator, as defined by Gary Edwards in a recent video. Well, he actually said supreme creator deity, but by deity he means a transcendent agent. This thesis doesn't discard other concepts of God, such as the pantheistic notion. Although in the following thesis, we may find out which idea does Spong have of God. Second. Since God cannot be longer be conceived in theistic terms, it becomes nonsensical to seek to understand Jesus as the incarnation of the theistic deity. So the Christology of the ages is bankrupt. There are many understandings of Christianity, from the evangelical narrow perspective of a born again who has accepted Jesus as his Lord and Savior, to some broader definitions that would include even the Mormons and the Jehovah Witnesses, along with some Unitarians. Most of these definitions require accepting Jesus as the Christ therefore Christian, and most of them recognize the Christ as the incarnation of a theistic God. So, from this kind of definition, what Spong proposes is not Christianity. But, this is the kind of Christianity I actually adhered before my apostasy, a Christianity that was rather based in the values taught by Jesus, regardless of Jesus being an incarnated deity, a charismatic human rabbi, a legend, or a myth. Third. The biblical story of the perfect and finished creation from which human beings fell into sin is pre-Darwinian mythology and post-Darwinian nonsense. Already the Catholic Church, among other churches and denominations, had accepted modern cosmology and evolutionary biology as the best account for the religions of the world as we know it. And that was my idea even since high school. This is nothing new. Fourth, the virgin birth, understood as literal biology, makes Christ's divinity, as traditionally understood, impossible. I just remember several years ago, a Jesuit priest wrote in his column in a newspaper that the Immaculate Conception and Virgin Birth, among other similar themes in Christianity, should not matter. The faith, being a good Christian, a good Catholic, should not be dependent on the myth. This is the kind of debate that occurs within the Church, however this priest was censored for his heretic views, but rather because he published them. Neither Jack Spong nor Alfonso Llano S.J are along in this thesis that Christianity should move away from the mythology and focus on values and principles. 5. The miracle stories in the New Testament cannot longer be interpreted in a post newtonian world as supernatural events performed by an incarnate deity. No further comment, this is in the line of similar thesis, the Christian mythology should not be the central part of Christianity as I believed back then before my apostasy, or as Jano and Spons believe. 6. 
the view of the cross as the sacrifice for the sins of the world is a barbarian idea based on primitive concepts of God and must be dismissed. These theses, along with numbers 7 and 8, are in the same line. Christianity, as understood by Spong, should not be based on mythology and on a magical interpretation of such mythology. Seventh, Resurrection is an action of God. Jesus was raised into the meaning of God. It therefore cannot be a physical resuscitation occurring inside human history. Somehow this is why Spong is still Christian and I am not. Although he does not believe in the resurrection of the flesh of Jesus, he still sees Jesus as God, just not as a theistic God. 8. The story of the Ascension assumed a three-tired universe, and is therefore not capable of being translated into the concept of a post-Copernican space age. Despite those fundamentalists that insist that the Bible is accurate describing the universe, the fact is that it is not. The image that is presented in most relevant books in the Bible is that the earth was flattish and the heavens were a firm dome above, and below the earth was the underworld. Most of these stories make sense in this conception of the world, even though there are a few other images around. Ninth, there is no external objective revealed standard written in the scripture or on tables of stone that will govern our ethical behavior for all time. The fact is that most Christians, even fundamentalists, do not follow the laws in the Bible, except by cherry-picking some of them. Actual moral behavior is not based on scripture, as Punk proposes that Christians should abandon the pretension that they do. 10th. Prayer cannot be a request made to a theistic deity to act in human history in a particular way. Given that I seldom prayed when I was still pretending to be a Christian, I don't have actually anything to say here. I even stopped asking God for anything since I was a teen, except for the repeated and almost meaningless prayer of the Lord, and I confess to you. 11th. The hope for life after death must be separately forever from the behavior control mentality of reward and punishment. The church must abandon, therefore, its reliance on guilt as motivation of behavior. Somehow I see this as Secular Ethics 101. When I recognized myself openly as an agnostic over 15 years ago, I just wondered if there is no ultimate justice, for example, as understood by the Christian myth of the Domesday, what would be the motivation to act ethically and morally? The fact is that most people do act ethically and morally regardless of transcendental consequences, or even regardless of personal mundane and immediate consequences. 12. All human beings bear God's image and must be respected for what each person is. Therefore, no external description of one's beings, where based on race, ethnicity, gender, or sexual orientation, can properly be used as the basis of either rejection or discrimination. God's image. Spong is still a Christian and a religious-minded fellow, at least publicly. While he has abandoned the theistic view of God, he still has an idea of God as something or someone that connects us. I might probably understand his idea and the theology that derives. I, as an atheist, lack an ultimate reason why I should care. I rely on my biological empathy and some political and philosophical principles on what would be the best behavior towards other people. Philosophically, I am a humanist. But I probably lack an ultimate why for my moral principles, like, for example, why is humanism a better philosophy than Marx's dialectical materialism? Spong, on the other hand, derives the ultimate motivation from his theology. Still, his theology does not provide him for definite moral actions, as neither does a Christian fundamentalist theology, nor does secular humanism or other philosophies and worldviews. But I see Spong's theology in a better position for a dialogue with secular humanists than more fundamentalist theologists.